Hello and welcome to part two of lesson four of our Microtik coding series and uh, we were midway through uh, coding up a script at the end of the last video and we're going to dive straight back into our coding demo to complete the script. Okay, so I'm just going to switch back to uh, VSC and you can see where we got to. Uh, we were um, we literally declared some uh, variables um, to configure the operation of the script and we actually just uh, made our first call to our debug function um, to show that we were actually starting uh, to uh, gather interface uh, samples for our um, threshold um, sampling and detection. So we're going to dive into the uh, main uh, loop now. We're going to actually use um, a for loop which we haven't met before so I'm going to um, uh, introduce that now, talk about for loops and see how we're actually going to be using that. So I'm going to paste in the code just to start off our for loop and um, sorry I've missed a small section out. I just type that in there. So yeah what we've actually got here now is a, um, a for loop and a for loop is used to repeat a series of actions a preset number of times. Um, we use it to sort of um, repeat a, a, a section of code and we probably want to change some values each time that we run it so it performs a slightly different set of operations for us and in this case we're using a loop to actually um, loop through and run the interface command 10 times uh, so that we can gather a sample each time and then we will average out all of the utilization samples that we've collected to see if it exceeds our threshold. Uh, so just to talk over the uh, construction of a for loop, you can see we start it with the uh, for command here at the start, the standard sort of uh, global command format, the scripting command format. Uh, the next thing that we've got here is actually a special kind of variable which only lives within a for loop. So this is a variable called loop count um, we can actually use the value of this um, in our main block of code here uh, in the in the do section here um, we're not actually going to use it uh, in our particular uh, example but you can use it if required and what happens is um, each time that the loop repeats the uh, the loop count variable will count from this number here which in our case is starting from number one and it will count all the way through to uh, this two um, parameter which in our case is um, we've put the variable num samples which is um, actually a, a value of 10 you can see up here on line 19 so the effect of this will be uh, this loop um, in the do section here the code within this section will be repeated uh, 10 times it'll just keep looping over and uh, running the the command uh, for us to extract our data from okay and obviously if we want to sort of tweak the uh, the way that this um, for loop works maybe we want to gather less samples or no, more samples we can just change the value of num samples here at the top of top of the script so that's why it's quite nice to have uh, these user variables at the top so we can easily adjust the value without having to go in and, and dig around in the code and sort of make mistakes and struggle to find uh, the specific area uh, where we'd like to make changes um, so so that's our for loop and as I say that's going to be run 10 times and execute the interface command so what I'm going to do now is post in the next block of commands and I'll just put a little space there just to make it a little bit more readable. So yeah, you can see from the comment here what we're going to do now is get the um, statistics uh, available uh, from the interface command. And, and this is the interface monitor traffic command that we've looked at previously and we sort of analyzed that in a fair amount of detail. And the output from this command is uh, an array, as we saw before. I'm going to put that into the interface stats variable here. And then what we'll do is we'll pull out um, the specific statistical information that we're interested in, as we saw in our previous example. Uh, so in this case, we'll be push, pulling out the transmit bits per second and the receive bits per second. So we can see the upload and download um, rate of traffic, which is going over the WAN link at this particular 
uh, point in time when the um, you know the interface command was run. So the next thing that we're going to do this is a, a, a slightly new concept here. I might break off for a second here and have a look at this in a little bit of detail. What we're going to do is we're going to verify that the data type that we get back from the um, interface command is the data type we expect. I did talk briefly about um, different data types we've got. We can have numbers, strings, IP addresses, arrays. There's quite a few different types. And one thing that we have to be careful about when we're coding is when we um, extract data from something like an, in the interface command, is the data that we extract in the correct data format? So for instance, if we pull back the uh, transmit bits per second, um, if it was in a string format, that wouldn't work if we want to do uh, a mathematical operation on it, if we want to, um, you know, perform averaging um, and, and um, operations like that. If it's a string, it's, it's just going to fail. So it's quite good practice to actually verify that the data that you're getting before you perform an operation is actually of the type that we expect. And to do that, we've got this uh, command here, which we haven't met before, which is called the type of command. And what I'm doing here, we're using a, a straightforward if statement, which we've seen before, and we're checking that the um, values that we're getting out, so the transmit bits per second and the receive bits per second, we're checking that they are the numeric data type that we expect. And if um, it isn't, so this is a, um, a not equals operator here. So we're saying if the type transmit bits per second is not equal to uh, a numeric type, then we actually we want to fail because the script is going to fail later on when it tries to do mathematical operations if it's not a number. And so what we do here in the do section of the if statement, um, another new command which we haven't met before, it's a um, an error um, command and what error does, it literally, it, it just forces the script to stop and outputs an error message. So here, if um, this parameter, oh sorry, if this variable wasn't a numeric type, it, the whole script would just grind to a halt and uh, the last thing the script would do would be put out this error message here to say we got the wrong data type. Um, it, I, you know, this is this is just an example, really, of the sorts of things you can do in your script. It, arguably, you may not really need this in here once you've had the script one run successfully. Once you know that the data type is going to be correct, but you know, if things change later on, it's definitely good practice to of uh, to have some basic checking in there to save it failing. Um, for unexpected reasons. So uh, that, that's a technique that's definitely well worth having a look at. We'll just do a very quick uh, demonstration of how um, type of works. I'm sorry, I've just <laughs> deleted the wrong thing there. So let's just jump over to our good old friend Winbox. And here we go. I'll just clear the screen a little bit. So what we'll do here, I'll just show you very quickly if I... Um, use the type of command. So as with everything else, when you're evaluating an expression, you need to um, need to put it in the, uh, you need to prefix it with put to put it out, to, to output it to uh, the CLI. So I will do type of, I will do something simple. So if we do say type of, sorry, I've misspelled. If we do type of, and we'll do the number five, we would expect that to be a number. And there we go. You can see it says it's type. Uh, it, it gives us an output of num. Uh, if I put something like um, type of, um, we'll, if we put a string or a alphanumeric characters in a pair of quotes, we know that should be a string. And we can see that gives us str to say that it's a string. I'll just try one more and we'll do put and we'll do type of and we'll do 192.168.101 which should be an IP address for us and there we go we've got IP so you can see how we can um, use this command type of to check the data that we're going to be operating on before we perform any operations and if we go back to our script you can see that we were testing to see if the variable um, TXBPS in this case 
is actually the num type which we would need to perform mathematical operations. Um, so that's another little aside there. The next part that we do is we um, we have a running total of the samples that we take. So we repeat the um, the sampling operation uh, once every second for 10 cycles using our loop count and we just keep, keep adding the samples that we get each time so we're actually taking in this case the current value of transmit bits per second and we keep adding it to the existing value of uh, transmit running total um, and so you can see we're actually using the set command to do that. So we will set it to the previous value of transmit running total and add the new sample that we've uh, captured. OK, uh, and we do that 10 times and then at the end we can actually average that out to see what the average um, bandwidth uh, or the average rate of, of data was that's uh, going across the WAN link. And um, we've got a fairly large debug um, command here so we basically call in the debug function so that we can output data uh, and see exactly what's going on at each stage so for every loop um, where we are sampling data on the interface we'll get an output and we can inspect it to see if we you know we are actually getting uh, valid data and uh, the results that we're getting are based on the data that's been collected um, I think that's yeah that's pretty much the end of the for loop there so you can see uh, what's that doing what that's doing in terms of collecting data so we've got data to operate on and get an average result uh, the next stage of the script is to actually calculate the average values that we want so we take um, the running total of data that's collected we divide it by the number of samples um, that we've taken so in our case it'll be 10 iterations and then we've actually done a, um, a division by 1000 to convert bits per second into kilobits per second um, so that the, um, the the values are a little bit more usable I mean arguably this probably might have been better if I actually divided by 1 million and we have the values in bits per second uh, sorry megabits per second but I'll, I'll leave that as a, an exercise for you to fix uh, later on uh, so we 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 calculate the average receive kilobits per second average transmit kilobits per second and we assign those to a couple more variables for use later on uh, and um, we also then put those just just for debugging purposes I'm just doing a couple more debugs uh, debug calls to our function so that that will be output and we can see what those values look like the next thing that we do is we actually create another variable um, which we're going to use as a timestamp in our alerting message uh, and what we're actually doing here is we're actually running the system clock uh, command and we're taking the output from that uh, and we're taking the date um, uh, we're using the date parameter just to get the current date and then we actually run it again here to get the current time and each of these commands will output a string uh, and so what we want to do we actually want to tie together the date string uh, and and you can see in the in the uh, the center of the, um, uh, the the expression here we've got a um, a dot and then we've actually got another string which is a dash uh, so that'll act as a separator between the date and the time and then we've got another dot and in router OS if you want to concatenate various strings together or to join a number of strings then the, you, you use this dot operator so we're getting the date and then we're joining it with this little separator here and then we're joining that on to the time uh, at the end here so uh, we will see the final format of that and you can see how that hangs together when we've got a um, uh, an alert to look at uh, the next thing that we do is we do some checking to see if our threshold is exceeded and we do this both for the receive um, data and for the transmit data so uh, in the first instance here we're having a look to see if our receive data rate has exceeded the threshold that we'd set we're using a standard if command and if it does 
Um, this is very similar to what we did in the last script. We actually generate a uh, an alert message, assign it to a local variable. We actually um, update the Telegram queue global variable. So we'll add in a new message. Uh, we also log that to the system log in the same way we've done previously. And we'll also just finally do a quick call to the debug function. So if we've got debugging enabled, we can see the alert message that's been generated. So we do that for the um, receive data and the transmit data. I'll just put that one in as well. And then we're pretty much done. Um, the only thing we finally do, there's a little bit of tidy up because we've declared a couple of global variables uh, for the debug function and the debug um, toggle, if you like, um, they would just be hanging around in the global namespace of the router. And once the script's finished, we want to tidy those up. So if we just call both of those using the set command, that will, because we don't supply a value, that will just, um, it'll just uh, reinitialize those variables to nothing and they, and they just cease to exist anymore they, they'll just go away in the global namespace table so that's just to tidy things up a little bit at the end there um so that's it that's the, that's the full script we can sort of run through it now and uh, just do a little bit of testing of it okay so let's have a go at running this up now i'll just save that transfer it to the um Microtik, there we go, and let's give this a go. So I'll basically do slash import and interface util. Let's see if this is going to, there we go. Uh, and we'll just run this initially to see if we get any sort of um, syntax errors, make sure it all runs okay. So that ran without any syntax errors. That's looking pretty good so far. So the next thing I probably want to do is to enable the debugging so we can see what's going on at each stage and um uh, actually i'm thinking maybe that's not that's not that's not probably run that's probably not run correctly because we should see at least a 10 second delay i think i've actually missed a piece of code out at the bottom of the loop i have i have there we go um apologies that's the uh, <laughs> the dangers copying and pasting between screens the at the bottom of the loop here there should actually be a one second delay. I don't know if you remember when we were defining the user variables, um, we added a, a delay timer so that we could have a one second space in between each um, data value that we took. So apologies for that, but it was a good a good test to see uh, that we'd got a problem there. So I'll save that. And then if I now hit the import, you can see now there's there's a delay because What's happening is the um, script is running and it's going through the loop and at the bottom of every, of every loop it runs this delay command which will delay for the variable loop delay which we've set to one which is one second. So that's finished now. So let's let's enable the uh, let's enable the debugging so we can see what's going on a little bit better. So we'll change debug to true. Save that. And we'll run it again. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Okay. So hopefully this time, yeah, you can see we're actually gathering uh, the data. And you can see we're doing 10 lots of sampling, hopefully. And then at the end, we see the uh, values that are calculated. So you can see we've calculated 25 kilobits per second and 87 kilobits per second. And there's nothing beyond that because the levels are so low um, that it's it's not going to <laughs> it's not going to register anything or create any sort of alert. So let's just go into our script again and let's give them ridiculously low levels of uh, for the threshold. Let's set them to 10 kilobits each. So hopefully that's going to cause us a couple of alerts. We obviously won't leave them at that, but. Uh, it's good for testing so here we go save that we'll run that again and we'll see how we get on with that okay so we've got the 10 samples again and hopefully the average will be above 10 kilobits per second for both transmit and receive and we'll get an alert so here we go yes we have we've got the calculated values of 13 kilobits per second and 60 kilobits per second and you can see we've actually generated an alert. And this is the um, timestamp 
that we were um, constructing uh, when I was showing you how we concatenate the strings together. Okay, so if we now go across to our um, microtick, hopefully we will see that we have, yeah, we've got a couple of warning messages in the um, in the log as we were expecting and also hopefully we've got, um, yeah, we've got a message in here. So it's difficult to see there. Let me, uh, if I do slash env and so it's not slash, it's colon env print. Hopefully we'll see the see what we've got. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can read it a little bit better. I'll run that again. And you can see we've got the Telegram queue and we've now got multiple alerts in there. We've got our original core temperature alerts and also we've now got some uh, utilization, uh, one utilization threshold uh, alerts as well. So you can see that we're building up a, a nice few alerts for us to uh, to do some analysis on later on. Um, so yeah, so that that's that's pretty much it for for this script. It we, we will again add this one to the um, to the scheduler. Let me just uh, just get a copy of the. Make sure I've got the correct command here. I'll copy that and we'll put it in the scheduler, as we did for the uh, temperature checker. So we go uh, system scheduler. And there we go. That's the temperature checker that's there and disabled. So we'll call this one. Well, I'll just paste in the. There we go. I just pasted in the name of the file and the import command, and I'll just use this to create the name within the scheduler. Don't forget, this isn't the name of the script. It's just a label within the scheduler, the actual script itself will be run from the command line here. Okay, and we'll run this one, maybe we'll run this one every five minutes. You can set this to whatever you like, but uh, that's the sort of area we might expect, a sort of sort of value we might expect. And I'll actually disable this one as well because we don't want this one <laughs> running and generating lots and lots of alerts. So I'm just going to go back to the script itself and we'll just tidy it up again, disable the debugging and put our original values back in there. Uh, so I think I was running transmit at um, 10 megabits per second, which is 10,000 kilobits per second. And I was running a receive threshold of 70,000. Okay. Is that the correct number now? One, two, three, four. There we go. Yep, that's right. So so this is all this is all ready to go now. Um there's nothing else for us to actually do on this. I'm quite happy that we've tested it. Um we've verified that it generates the uh, messages we expect. The syntax all looks good. Um, and yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with the operation of this. There's obviously quite a bit more in this one than we've seen previously, but hopefully you've been able to sort of follow along and learned quite a few new bits and pieces uh, to help you with your own scripts. So let's just go back to the um, slide deck just to see if there's anything else we need to cover. So we've created our script uh, called Interface Util. Uh, we've made sure we get our system log messages when there's a failure uh, we've made sure that we insert uh, error messages into the telegram queue variable uh, it, we've stored it on the marketing device we're running it from the scheduler and that's pretty much it if you want to know any more about any of the uh, commands well if, uh, well if you want to get any of the code you can look on marketingscripting.com the slide deck for this um, and all of the other videos will be on there as well in terms of other references, the book is obviously a, a good reference, but for those who uh, can't get access to it, um, then there is a Microtik uh, scripting page, which is definitely worth a look, which covers a lot of these concepts. It's, it's not quite as accessible, um, especially for beginners uh, as the book, but um, you know, at least you could look there for reference and maybe look up a few bits and pieces if there are any concepts that weren't um, as clear as you would have liked, maybe. So... 
I think with that, I'm going to uh, end this lesson. It's been quite a long one. We've covered some pretty um, interesting and quite a few new concepts. Uh, but hopefully you can see what a useful um, script this could be. I've, re I've been running it actually on my home router for uh, quite a few weeks now. And it's amazing when you get sudden bursts of activity and you start getting telegram alerts. It's, you sort of uh, have a look, see what's going on on the network. It's, uh, it's a pretty useful one. Anyway, um, I hope it's been useful. And in lesson five, we'll be looking at another one of the probe scripts uh, to, to finish off all of our probes before we move on to the telegram alerting itself. So I hope this has been useful and uh, I'll see you next time.